Grace, mercy, and peace are yours. From God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe in Sasquatch. I believe that the world is really flat. I believe that people never really landed on the moon. I believe that when you die, you turn into and come back as an animal. I believe that aliens are really responsible for creating all life on Earth. Now, of course, those things that I just listed were really nonsense, weren't they? Um, All silly things, but some people actually might believe those things. And what I've found is that the more I talk to people, whether they're atheists, they don't believe there's a God, agnostic, they're open to God, whether they're skeptic and they're just looking for the right evidence, what I find is that everyone believes in something. Everyone has faith of some kind. They're listening to something, whether it's tabloids, whether it's the internet or conspiracy theories, or maybe the the Fox News or reading their textbooks. You're listening to something, you're reading something, and you have to take this, this leap of faith to decide whether or not you're going to believe in something that you have never really seen. Everyone believes in something. Everyone has faith of some kind. As Christians, you're a Christian because your faith is in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. When a Christian says, I believe, they're saying that I believe Jesus Christ is my personal Savior from sin, that He washes me, makes me clean. And because faith is such an important part of life as a Christian, Today, the Holy Spirit takes us to look very carefully and closely at saving faith through these words of the, Apostles Paul, the Apostle Paul. Today, we're going to see that, that faith is a living power. And what that means for us is that it, it defies the cold, hard facts. That faith is a living power that trusts in God's promises. It's a living power, which means it's saved by grace. So today what we're going to do is we're just going to take our our reading from Romans 4, just section by section. So we're going to begin by looking at the first two verses, verse 18 and 19, where Paul writes, Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and Sarah's womb was also dead. Faith is a living power that defies the cold hard facts. One thing about faith that I want to clear up is oftentimes people have, have the misconception that, that faith and science are two separate things. That science exists in a box over here and faith exists in that box over here along with ideas like Bigfoot and, and stuff like that. And really, faith and science are the same thing. What, what science is, science is just the study of God's creation. It's the study of the laws of nature and, and how God has ordered and created all things well. And so it's a wonderful thing when, when Christians engage themselves in the sciences so they can study and learn and become more familiar with God's good creation. And why this is important is, is because... As a Christian, as a Christian that's well informed and understands the laws of science, it's important to recognize when people step beyond science and into the realm of theory or faith. 
You know, when, when our world today teaches, teaches things like uh, the Big Bang Theory or macroevolution as fact, no one was there to witness those things. It's not true science. You've stepped beyond just the study of facts and you're taking a leap of faith, believing in something that you have not seen. But this, the study of God's creation is also wonderful for us because that way we recognize miracles. We recognize miracles, that, that there are cases in history where the finger of God reaches down to this earth and breaks the laws of science, breaks the laws of nature. That's what the definition of a miracle is. We recognize that there's these laws that govern creation, but here's an example where God reveals himself as a creator God by intentionally breaking the rules. It's neat that that's the faith that Abraham had. It's it's a faith that defies the cold, hard facts. Abraham had to face the reality that his body was as good as dead, or that Sarah's body was as good as dead. He was 100 years old. She was 90 years old. There was no way, if you look at all of human history and all the people that have had babies scientifically, you'd say that's impossible. But here was an instance in time where God reaches his finger down and touches Sarah and enables her to miraculously conceive to show that he is the one true God over creation. He has the power of life in his hand. So what are the cold, hard facts that you have to face every day in your life? Is it the fact that we live in a cursed world with a body that is affected by the curse of sin? And and what that means is that we have to face physical death. The, 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 the decay of our bodies. Maybe it means the, the struggle with arthritis or chronic pain or, or heart problems. Battles against cancer. Finding yourself in that dark, cold cave of depression. Or even having to look at the cold, stiff body of a loved one. We have to face death. Not just physical death, there's, there's spiritual death that we battle with every day. That's one of the cold, hard facts of life, that, that we struggle in keeping God's word. We could have the best intentions as a disciple, yet week after week, we might, we fall into sin. We do fall into sin. We break those commandments. We fall short of God's glory. But where does faith power rest? What's in God's power to defy the cold, hard facts. And the evidence of that is when the finger of God reached into the cold, dark tomb and, and touched the cold, dark corpse of Jesus Christ and brought him to life again. It's, it's God's signature miracle over all of creation that he raised Jesus Christ from the dead. That's his proof to you. He has the power to change the facts in your life. We can, we can pray for miracles of healing and miracles of freedom from cancer and sickness. And God in his grace might reach his finger down and answer that prayer. But we know ultimately that God will keep that prayer and answer that and, and change those facts when he raises us up from the dead. And even if it's in the, the struggle against sin in our life, Jesus' resurrection from the dead means... Your sins are forgiven. It means God creates new life, and his finger touches you today to create that new life in you, a spiritual resurrection from the dead, so you can walk and live according to his word. We go back to our verses, and, and beginning at verse 20, we'll read through verse 21. Yet, he, that is Abraham, did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Faith 
is a living power to trust God's promises. Here's another important distinction with faith. Oftentimes I hear people will say, I believe in miracles, or I believe because of a miracle, or things like that. And, and this technically is, is not correct. Jesus warns us, actually, about a faith in miracles. He says in Matthew 16, A wicked and adulterous generation asks for signs and miracles, and none will be given except the sign of Jonah, which was a promise to raise Jesus from the dead. In Matthew 24, Jesus warns the disciples about putting a faith in in miracles, because he says in the last days there will be false Christs and false prophets who will appear and they'll do signs and wonders that will deceive many, even the elect, if that were possible. Jesus openly admits that there are other forces in the world that have power to at least work the appearance of miracles. And he warns us about putting our faith in those miracles. It's dangerous because you can look at at someone, a a pastor, a teacher, or something like that, and you could see them working miracles on TV, and you must think, well, that must mean that everything they say is correct. Or maybe a, a person has a miracle happen in their life, and they might say that, well, because of that, that must mean everything is right between me and God. Or on the flip side of that, a person can pray and pray and pray for a miracle, and when God doesn't answer that prayer and God doesn't give them the miracle they want, their faith can fall into despair because they haven't received what they've asked for. Their faith was in miracles. But instead, God wants our faith to be firmly planted in His promises. There's a difference here. In fact, you'll, you'll notice here, it says Abraham's faith was in the promise that God would do this blessing for him, do this miracle for him. And what's interesting in the life of Abraham is that God makes the promise to Abraham that he would have many, that he would have a son and God would create many nations through him. God makes a promise for him when he's 75 and God answers that promise, delivers on that promise 25 years. Years later. Why did he do that? It was 25 years of misery for Abraham because he's wondering, when is God going to answer this promise? When is God going to do this for me? You know, God didn't have to promise it and deliver 25 years. He, he didn't have to tell him anything. He could have either given him the child at, at 75 or waited until he was 100 to give him the child. But instead, God makes the promise, has him wait So that through that period of waiting, his faith has to rest in God's promise, not in the miracle. In fact, that's the way God worked from the very beginning. Adam and Eve fell into sin. And that very moment, God promises a Savior that would come through the seed of the woman and crush the serpent's head. But there was thousands of years in between the promise and the delivery of that promise. Or even Jesus, when he promises a sign of Jonah that that he would rise again on the third day, there was three days of waiting before God delivered that promise. He does this so that our faith is in the promise in God's word instead of in the miracle. And so for you, Christians, for, for you, what, what God wants for you to do is to comb through the scriptures and read and find those personal promises that God makes to you and to hold on to those promises. He promises that nothing can never separate you from the love of God through faith in Christ Jesus. He promises that He will be with you always to the very end of the age. He promises that no temptation has come upon you except that which is common to other people. And that it won't overcome you, but He's going to give you grace and strength to overcome. He promises that you will personally crush Satan under your feet. He promises you will personally crush death under your feet when He raises you from the dead on the last day. He promises you eternal life in heaven. And 
And whether the promises that God gives, there's a long period of waiting between them or a really short period of waiting, you can count on all of them. Because Jesus says in John 10, 35, the scripture cannot be broken. God cannot, will not ever break a promise to you. Verse 22 to the end of our reading. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words, it was credited to him, were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness. For us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, he was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Faith is a living power which is saved by grace. The last thing about faith that I want to warn about today is that we have a tendency as Christians to take faith and to turn it into a good work that we do. And you can almost get that sense from when you read this and and his faith was credited to him. You know, in the English language, when we hear that word credited, at least for me, I jump to the to extra credit. You know, I think of myself as a student, you know, working above and beyond, and so I'm given extra credit, and so the emphasis is on the, the recipient. The emphasis is on me doing something to get that extra credit. And so oftentimes we can think about our faith in the same terms. And what happens is faith, instead of being planted on God's promises, instead of holding on to God's promises and his word, it turns inward and points back at myself And instead, we we tell ourselves to look for a certain quality within me, a certain quality in my faith, and that's where I'm going to find confidence. So we tell ourselves that I need to feel more guilty. I need to feel that 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 guilt. I need to feel that that real repentance. And and if I don't really have that that feeling, then I can't be certain that I've truly, honestly repented and therefore am truly, honestly saved. We tell ourselves, oh, if if I feel these doubts, then then I can't really be saved because doubt is the opposite of faith. And, And I look inward and I just see all these doubts that I have to wrestle with. Look at faith as a quality of victory. That if my faith were stronger, if I were more confident, if I were better at living the Christian life, then I could be certain that I really, truly have this saving faith and therefore I am righteous, declared righteous in God's sight. What happens in all of these cases, it's faith is turned inward on ourselves instead of focusing on God's promises. <laughs> It's like, in my mind, I get the picture of the, the you know, the cartoon character where they, they go off the edge and they're off the edge of a cliff and you get this moment of pause where they look at the camera right before the plummet. And oftentimes, I find that that's why Christians find themselves in these places of despair because they're focused inward on themselves instead of fixing on God's promises. So the, the, that word credited, um, oftentimes you'll see other translations will use instead the word imputed, which is a little more precise. The word here, Im- imputed, that's a, it's a legal term for giving something to someone. And the emphasis instead is on the giver, not the recipient. It is imputed as righteousness. Faith is, is a gift from God, we're told in Ephesians chapter 2 or in Romans 10. We're told faith comes by hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. So, so faith is a creation of the Holy Spirit. We don't get to take credit for it. God creates it in us, and, and then faith, what does it do? It does what God creates it to do, and that it latches on to God's word and his promises. 
So I like to think of you know, a little, little baby when it's created in the womb. You know, the Bible says, you knit me together in my mother's womb. You think of a baby with, with their hand and all the, the little muscles and bones and, and fibers and nerves and everything that is in that hand that connects it to the brain. And what's, what's amazing is like the, a, a newborn baby that's just born. What will that hand do when dad sticks his finger in that hand? What does it do? Instinctively, it grasps that finger, doesn't it? It's instinctively. It's already there. God created that. God created it and put that, that instinct to just grasp what's placed in his hand. And that's faith, right? It's a creation of God to grasp the promises, to grasp the mighty finger of God the Father that reaches down to touch your heart with his word and his promises. That's a wonder. Wonderful beauty and comfort of faith. It's not something I do. It's something God creates in me. And even though it's the instinct of faith, what faith does is it grasps those promises. And what I find is that in life, we're the ones that teach ourselves to let go. We're the ones that teach ourselves to fight against that instinct to trust in God's promises. And so for you today... This is God's encouragement to you to ever strengthen that faith, to exercise that faith, to use those muscles, to grasp God's finger more, ever more firmly. Today, the Holy Spirit teaches us that faith is a living power. It defies the cold, hard facts. It is a living power in God's promises. And it is a living power as saved by grace. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.